Hi there strikers. There's something uniquely disturbing about people vanishing into thin air. Read about these incredibly strange, unsolved case although these disappearances span centuries, locations, age ranges, and circumstances, there's one common thread shared between them, a lack of closure. There are theories, speculations, and investigations, but never a decisive answer. On our incoming, episode I'm going to feature some of the cases of mysterious disappearances of some missing that just disappear without any trace. Here is the second part of Agula student disappearances. On September 26, 2014, at approximately 6 p.m. more than 100 students from the Aitzinapa Rural Teachers College in Tixtla, Guerrero, traveled to Aguila, Guerrero, to commandeer buses for an upcoming march in Mexico City. The students had previously attempted to make their way to Chilpancingo but state and federal authorities blocked the routes that led to the capital. In Agula, their plan was to interrupt the annual DIF conference of Maria de Los Angeles Pine de Villa, local president of the organization and the wife of the Aguila mayor. The purpose of the conference and after party was to celebrate her public works and to promote her campaign as the next mayor of Igula. The student teachers also had plans to solicit transportation costs to Mexico City for the anniversary march of the 1968 student massacre in Tlatelolco. However, on their way there, the students were intercepted by the Aguila Municipal Police Force at around 9.30 p.m., reportedly on orders of the mayor. The details of what followed during the students' clash with the police vary. According to police report, the police chased the students, because they had hijacked three buses and attempted to drive them off to carry out the protests and then return to their college. Members of the student union, however, stated that they had been protesting and were hitchhiking when they clashed with the police. As the buses sped away and the chase ensued, the police opened fire on the vehicles. Two students were killed in one of the buses, while, some fled into the surrounding hills. Roughly three hours later, escaped students returned to the scene to speak with reporters. In a related incident, unidentified gunmen fired at a bus carrying players from a local soccer team which they may have mistaken for one of the buses that picked up the student protesters. Bullets struck the bus and hit two taxis. The bus driver, a football player, and a woman inside one of the taxis were killed. The next morning, the authorities discovered the corpse of a student, Julio Cesar Mondragon, who had attempted to run away during the gunfire. His eyes had been gouged out and the skin of his face flayed to a bare skull. In total, six people were killed and twenty-five wounded. After the shootings, eyewitnesses said that students were rounded up and forced into police vehicles. Once in custody, the students were taken to the police station in Aguila and then handed over to the police in Coquilla. Cookula Deputy Police Chief Cesar Nava Gonzalez then ordered his subordinates to transport the students to a rural community known as Puebla Vio. At some point, while still alive, the students were handed over by the police to members of the Guerreros Unidos, United Warriors, a criminal organization in Guerrero, splintered from the Beltran Leva cartel. One of the trucks used to transport the students was owned by Gildardo Lopez Astudillo, alias El Cabo Gil, a high-ranking leader of the gang. El Gil then called Cidronio Casarubias Salgado, the top leader of Guerrero's Unidos, and told him that the people he had in custody posed a threat to the gang's control of the area. 
Guerrero's Unidos likely believed that some of the students were members of a rival gang known as Los Rojos. With that information, Casarubias allowed his subordinates to kill the students. Investigators believe that a gang member known by his alias El Chucky or El Chucky took part in the killings. He was suspected of collaborating with Francisco Salgado, Valadez, one of Aguila's security chiefs, in kidnapping the students. According to investigators, the students were taken to a dumpster in the outskirts of Cucula. After reaching the site it is likely that 15 students had died of suffocation and the other students were then killed by Patricio Reyes Lander, Jonathan Nosario Gomez and Agustin Garcia Reyes. These three suspects then dumped the bodies in a pit, and some other suspects known only by their aliases burned the corpses with diesel, gasoline, tires, wood and plastic. They also destroyed the students' clothing in order to erase all possible evidence. The fire probably lasted from midnight until 2 o'clock or 3 p.m. The gang assigned guards throughout the day to make sure that the fire was kept alive. When the fire had gone down, the suspects threw dirt in to cool the pit. They then placed the remains in eight plastic bags and dumped them in the San Juan River in Cucula, reportedly on orders from a man known only as El Turco. El Gil then sent a text message to Cazar Rubias Salgado confirming the completion of the task. We turned them into dust and threw their remains in the water. They, authorities, will never find, them. The text read. Initially, 57 students were reported missing, 14 of them, however, were located after it was found that they had returned to their families or had made it back safely to their college. The remaining 43 were still unaccounted for. Student activists accused authorities of illegally holding the missing students, but Guerrero authorities said that none of the students were in custody. Believing that the missing students had fled through the hills during the shootings, authorities deployed a helicopter to search for them. The 43 students, however, were never found. The mass disappearance of the 43 students marked arguably the biggest political and public security crisis Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto had yet faced in his administration, 2012-2018. The incident drew worldwide attention and led to protests across Mexico, and international condemnation. The resulting outrage triggered near-constant protests particularly in Guerrero and Mexico City. Many of them were peaceful marches headed by the missing students' parents, who come from poor rural families. Other demonstrations turned violent, with protesters attacking government buildings. Unlike other high-profile cases that have occurred during the Mexican drug war, 2006 present, this case resonated particularly strongly because it highlighted the extent of collusion between organized crime and local governments and police agencies on September 28, 2014, members of the Office of the General Prosecutor in Guerrero arrested 22 police officers for their involvement in the shooting and disappearance of the students police chief and Aguilas director of public security, Felipe Flores Velasquez, turned in firearms, police vehicles, time shifts information, and policemen involved in the incident to the Ministry of Public Security. The state government said that the 280 municipal police officers in Aguila had been called in for questioning about the incidents. All but 22 of them were released without charge.
State Prosecutor Inaki Blanca Cabrera stated that the 22 officers detained had used excessive or deadly force against the students. Mm. The investigations concluded that 16 of the 22 police officers had used firearms against the students. They were imprisoned at the State Penitentiary Social Reintegration Center of Las Cruces in Acapulco, Guerrero. A few days later, they were transferred to the Federal Social Readaptation Center No. 4, also known as El Rincon, a maximum security prison in Tepic, Nayarit, under aggravated murder charges. The mayor of Aguila, Abarca, claimed in an interview on September 29, 2014 that he had no previous knowledge of the incident and that he could not have been responsible because he was attending a conference and after party when the clashes took place following this he claimed to have left to dine with his family at a restaurant. He said he heard about the attack when his personal secretary called him and gave him the details. After that, I was in constant communication with the police, giving them orders to not fall for provocations, Abarka said. He said he was not aware of the students that were missing or of their investigation. 86. He also pledged that he would not resign and agreed to cooperate if he was investigated. 87. That day, Abarka met with the former party of the Democratic Revolution, PRD, President Jesus Zambrano Grijalva who requested him to formally petition resignation. PRD, President Jesus Zambrano Grijalva, who requested him to formally petition a resignation. Moreover, one account, stated that Abarca's wife Maria de Los Angeles Binder Villa was last seen at Guerrero's tourist promotion body, Pritcher in Acapulco that day in a private meeting with State Governor Angel Aga Rivero. Eyewitnesses reportedly saw Binder worried and in a hurry on September 30, 2014, Abarco asked for a 30-day leave of absence which was granted by the Aguila City Council. His absence came amid pressures from other members of his political party, the PRD, who asked him to resign in order to facilitate investigations before the official session was over at the city council, federal agents arrived asking for Abarca, but he had already left. Federal agents then raided the mayor's house because he had an order of appearance. Abarca was believed to have left Aguila with his wife and children. Investigations concluded that he had left Guerrero but was still in hiding somewhere in Mexico. We are looking for him in an ongoing investigation. We have people on him, said Thomas Zeran de Lucio, head of the Criminal Investigation Agency. Rumors suggested that he had fled the country. Felipe Flores Velasquez was also issued an order of appearance. However, Flores was not located at that time. Abarca still benefited from immunity under Mexican law, which protects elected officials from prosecution unless they commit a serious crime. In Abarca's case, he was protected from prosecution of common crimes, but not from federal charges. On October 18, 2014, it was revealed that Guerrero's Unidos, United Warriors, gang leader Cedronio Cazarubias Salgado was arrested by Mexican authorities. United Warriors members were suspected of being involved in their abduction and murder of the 43 students. On June 24, 2020, Salgado's brother and replacement as United Warriors leader Jose Angel Cazarubias Salgado was arrested. By this point in time, it was believed that El Mocomo was in fact responsible for the disappearance of the students and also the one who also ordered their murders. On 26 September 2020, 
arrest warrants were issued for more police and, it was the first time arrest warrants were issued for soldiers as part of this investigation. Eight other cartel members were also arrested. The mayor of Aguila, Jose Luis Sabarca, has been accused of direct participation in the earlier torture and murder of an activist, the mayor's wife. Maria de Los Angeles Pine de Villa, is the sister of known members of the Beltran Leva cartel. The mayor and, his wife, and the police chief, fled the area and were declared fugitives. Protesters demanding justice for the victims marched in several cities.